square foot. What's square foot? They just, no, I mean, they, they can't feel this. This is your industry, guys. I mean, this is the industry you're wanting to replace. Yeah, I can teach you mine, but I can't teach you yours. So if you don't know what tile goes for a square foot, drywall goes for a square foot, you know, trusses, it, it, I'm sorry, you're, you're just fighting. I can't teach you construction, okay? I can teach you the benefits and the value of a machine that will kick the crap out of any competitor you have. But I can't teach you construction. So if you don't know it and you don't come here with somebody that does, experience has shown us we shouldn't be talking to you. Well, that's a rude that's in there. Dude, you really don't get the neck, the level of what's going on here. The whole world wants to know about concrete printing. Bunch of stuff about how to build a house. Yeah. And I'm the only one with a phone number with the whole damn world. Universities, governments, students, contractors, hydrating people. I mean, we are the only company. So I'm sorry if it's offensive. I'm sorry if somebody needs to teach me about business and you got the long to learn buster or whatever. I'm not, uh, okay, granted, okay, I'm gonna play the percentage. I talked with anybody that wanted to talk to me the whole first year, and I know what percentage of those people ended up in said. Mm -hmm. And then I know what percentage actually showed up responsibly. Architect, engineer, okay, a check. So, I apologize, but we really have to pick who it is that we're meeting with, and that's the reason why. As you go through this, okay, before we can do a side-by-side -side comparison, we have to start off with traditional construction. And that is what this is on our website, okay? Traditional building cost calculator. We'll go back one, actually. Okay, so these are cost calculators. We have uh, the apples to apples comparison. Okay, can't do apples to apples unless, look, show us, show me yours, I'll show you mine, okay? Apples is going through, taking a blueprint, figuring out all the costs for the things that our printer can do. We don't print carpet yet, we don't need porcelain, okay? You uh, said, you said yet. Yet. Okay. So, <laughs> apples to apples comparison. That's the first thing that has to be done. The second thing that has to be done is we need to determine our mix, okay? What is the mix that we're gonna be using? Uh, actually, that's the third thing. Back costs, okay? We break it down, or at some point we have to pick a, uh, a format that everybody understands, okay? And so we are breaking our costs down into a cubic inch, uh, and each one of these, they'll, they'll make a lot more sense if you watch our video. What's the name of the video, Kish? Oh, that first hour one? Yeah. Uh, understanding the differences. Understanding the differences. If you haven't watched Understanding the Differences, you're not going to understand this. So, um, then we go to our mix formula where we break down the mixes. Uh, don't get excited. I'm not giving you our mixes. Okay, it took us three years to get here, and we're the only company that does give the mixes. Okay, everybody else wants you to buy their printer and then buy their ink and then ship it from Germany or Netherlands or Hellsafe, even you know New York. So, uh, and then finally, once you've done this, you'll be able to do a project plans analysis. You won't be able to do this. So, we're going to start from the beginning. We're not going to get through all of it today, but it's important to understand this. Even if you're not in sales, and you're not selling printers or selling homes or anything else, you still need to know this because your project site, your uh, print pilot for your print team, this here is where he goes to determine how much material do I need on site in order to print this facility. He will know. Uh, also, this is where you determine how many hours is it going to take in order for us to print uh, this structure. And unless you have this, the mixed formula, in the lab results, you can't do this either because you won't know what novel speed you're going to print at. When you're concrete printing, you cannot print. Oops, I don't have. Oh. When you're concrete printing,
printing, you can't print. Each one of these is a pass. You can't print faster than what you're curing below. If you try, it's going to fall over. Okay? We have a lot of experience with products falling over to get to where we are today. So, the key factor is not to speak. How long does it take to print and get back to here? Okay? Right there. And so, that starts here with the mixed formula and the structural engineer uh, in determining how full each pass is going to be, how wide each pass is going to be. It's going to be a solid wall, hollow wall, a wall with mortar reinforcement. All those things come into play here. So, we'll put this here for a minute. Come back to that later. We'll go to apples to apples. I hope you like our head, okay? Because we designed a printer that would use 89% of what you need that is literally readily available at your local hardware store. Home Depot, Chase Hardware. Uh, we knew our contractors would want to buy the product and ship it halfway around the world. Just, it, it was contradicting to one of the most important parts of concrete printing, and that is speed. We do in a couple of days, it takes a month, month and a half to do. But if I got to order stuff, wait for it, show them everything else. So, uh, and we, we played around with a lot of these different mixes uh, as our base. You have a base mix, and then you start playing with additives uh, to get it to where it needs to be. So, go down a little bit. So, you take a floor plan, and you got to do a takeoff just like anything else, okay? How many linear feet of walls? People say, well, how much do a 16 by a 1600 square foot house? Well, hell, I don't know. Are we talking about a house that looks like this? A house that's like this? Okay. Uh, a 16 square, 1600 square foot house can have, you know, 400 linear foot of walls. It can have 280 linear foot of walls. And since we print walls, it's kind of, I don't care what the mass is. Okay, so it's a different way to think when you're talking about concrete printing. We need to know all the walls, all the linear walls, okay? Closets, door surrounds, bay windows, everything. You gotta do a takeoff of all these different walls. Some people are uh, wanting to, well, go down just a little bit, because we'll show. Okay, right here. Actually, you start off with your, uh, your footing, uh, the printer forms your footing. Okay, it prints the footing itself. Go back in, put your rebar in before it's set. Okay, it's going to be the, the squarest home you've ever built. It'll actually be square. Uh, drywall guys are going to look into that. Uh, and so, it'll print the footings. Okay, form solid. Go up just a little bit more. So, when you're looking, go back up. No case. Yeah. So, for the sake of traditional construction costs, uh, just fill this in, oh, square foot, or uh, linear foot. Linear foot of walls, okay? Can you see it when I do this? The camera get me? Oh, yeah. Okay, linear foot of walls. Uh, I'm sorry, linear foot of footings. Footing, average height. How wide are footings? 12 inches, 8 inches, it's got to be specified. And then it'll calculate the rest of this stuff for you. For the most part, forming cost. Uh, remember, this is to establish what traditional costs are going to be. So you have to be able, you have to know that okay, if my forming costs are costing me this much, rebar is going to cost me this much. Uh, come back, back in, how many total yards of material am I going to back fill in? Back in the forms, how much labor, how many hours. Uh, did I have to bring in a pump truck? Or were we able to get this in the boom? Go down a little bit. And this is, when I'm talking about this kind of stuff, you know what a pump truck is, and a boom, and slap work, and footings. Uh, it, it, I, I mean, honestly, it is a pipe dream. So I don't want to discourage anybody, but ideally, uh, the more you know about construction in, in the first place, a lot more sense this is going to make. Uh, so then afterwards, you got form stripping. You got to have send in a crew. They're they're 
breaking re uh, bars, they are splitting wood, they're throwing away, they have waste and shrinkage that has to go into effect, uh, cost of damaged lumber, how many days allotted. This days allotted is an important part of what you're gonna do. How many days for this, how many days for this, 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 this. And guys, when you're all done, this is still perfect world. This means that all the millennials got up this morning and actually wanted to come to work for your drywall guy, for your framing guy, or whatever else. I'm sorry, millennials. <laughs> You're too easy to play with. Um, but anybody that's been a project manager, this is, they, they realize, okay? okay? We realize on the third, we're gonna have our framers in, and on the sixth, we're going to have you know, trust guys are going to come in and start running our trusses. On the 11th, we're going to be running the drywall, sheeting the outside on this date. Uh, let's see, four, okay, you have a schedule. Okay. If the framers don't show up on the third, what happened to the next schedule? When you're calling the drywall guys, oh, I, I know where we're going to have lay. I know the framers didn't come. And they're like, so uh, we already had jobs. Yeah, shit. I got another job. That, you know, I can't. I, I got. I'm on another project for three and a half weeks. Oh my hell! So now you're out either pushing a job back three and a half weeks and trying to get everybody after the drywall guys, which is your tapers and your painters and everybody else, to agree to a new schedule because these guys didn't show up, or you're on the phone paying top dollar trying to find anybody you can that's got a hole that can come out here and do the drywall guys job. This is construction, and right now, this guy gave you a bid for this job two and a half months ago, more than likely, when you were bidding it for the client, and now he's got three other jobs that have come in on your date of 11, they're offering to pay him 20% more. What happened to your job? Oh, sorry, you can't come. Okay, because this is construction, okay? And I get people that give me some pushback, Jeez, you're gonna, you're gonna ruin you know, seven trades, you know, you're not going to have framers, you're not going to have drywall, you're not going to have stucco, you're not going to have footing people, you're not going to have layout people. But yeah, you do realize that people can't afford homes and people are dying every day because they don't have one, right? Okay, so I get it. There, there's going to be some pushback, okay? Nothing that Steve Jobs and Bill Gates didn't have to figure out. Uh, we don't have 100 people sitting in a room playing with 10 keys anymore, okay? Our cell phones, of course. So. Uh, we're not going to say no to the technology because some new trades might have to learn how to be a little more competitive. Uh, it's not going to happen. Well, let's talk soccer, guys. Awesome. Yeah, my <laughs> whole family did drywall. I freaking hate it's drywall. Awesome. If they could have come up with something that would have put me out of drywall for everybody, I quit drywall, so I finally <laughs> still have hair, but my dad doesn't. Anyway, the bottom line is we're going to take a month and a half, two months worth of work and we're gonna do it two days for it, okay? And we're not coordinating with seven subs and getting materials on the job or flat tires or somebody didn't wake up or whatever, whatever, whatever. So, uh, but unless you're from construction and understand construction, you just think I'm getting up here being ignorant and sour grapes and so forth. But if you had experience with construction, like, holy hell, no. <laughs> maybe oh, that guy built the printer he does, did because he understands construction. So, uh, and none of this is going to make sense to the average person, but if you come from a background of construction, it's going to make a lot of sense. The reason these days allotment is going to be important is because you, you add days in there, and by the time you're done, you're like, okay, a month and a half worth of work, two days worth of work. Wow. <laughs> Construction's got a whole hell of a lot easier, okay? Uh, the University of Arizona has just bought a credit from us. Their whole construction management course, which nobody wants, nobody wants to be in construction no more. No, and the people are knocking down the door. Can we sign up for construction management? No, they're about ready to cancel the whole program until our printer. And now it's like, oh my gosh, I'm like a robot. Okay, uh, this is the leading edge of construction. This is high tech, and they are excited about it, and their class is full. So go ahead, go on a little bit more. So after the forms, then you strip. Come back and you do your slap, okay? Then you do your slap finishing. Go up. Uh, pretty soon we will be doing the flat work. We will actually be printing that slap. Sorry, not yet. 
uh, strip all the forms. Okay? If you were going to do a basement, which our printer does, one of the only ones that does, you take the legs off it, you set it on the ground, you grade it out, and print the wall. Okay? Uh, throw your trusses or put your metal plate down, whatever you're going to do for that first floor, put the legs back on, print above ground floor. Oh, we want to do two stories. Okay? Run our trusses. Okay, TTIs all the way across, sheet it, go up on top, extend our legs, and print second story. Go ahead. Up. So you get framing, how many days, get the material to the job site. Now we're gonna run our rough electrical. Okay, there's a cost for all of this stuff. Now you still have electrical, but what, what you won't have now is uh, you're going to have to come back and get some B-roll for this. You're not going to have this. Okay? You're not, you're not going to have obstruction. With traditional constructions, when I'm running electrical, I'm drilling every single stud. It's a nightmare. Guys, you get this stuff in their eyes. They're up above. They're just, it's, it's a nightmare. Okay? Rough electrical. Same thing for the plumbing. Okay? Uh, that is non-existent. When you're dealing with a hollow wall like this here, you just run your electrical, just home runs. So your electrical bill is going to go down significantly. Up a little more. Same thing with rough plumbing, okay? We're not drilling big two inch holes, so you're an inch and a quarter. Uh, running your peak, that ADS, through all that kind of stuff. Drywall, we don't need drywall because we're finishing the wall as we go. And at the end of the day, it looks as smooth as that. So, a little more because we're not doing drywall. We're not sending in a crew for five days to tape. Tape first coat, go home, come back the next day, put on a second coat, okay? Four inch, six inch, 12 inch, furred out, none of this, done. When we're at eight foot, we are drywall and we are stuck up. Go ahead. But when I am done and it's smooth wall, if I can go back and hit that with top coats, I can take a, a broadcast gun and just spray it, go down to a knockdown brocade, I can do a stamped uh, brocade, I can, you, you can have any effect that you have a drywall with our wall as well. Uh, stucco, there is no lathing, okay? There is no additive material to come back and try and blow on or use a hawk and just slap it on, slap it on, slap it on, and then trowel it out. None of that, because we are, B-roll is going to be showing us finishing the wall of the truck. Okay? You're, you're going to literally be finishing the wall as you're going with a sponge trap. Go back in with a trap. Any any type of texture you want, that's what you get. How, how do you do that, James? How do you, how do you put the, uh, what do you call it, the knockdown? How do you put a knockdown? wall on the inside. You've, you've, seen, you've seen a hopper for drywall where they put the mud in it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah, you just do a, a, if you want an orange peel, you just spray it all down. You can just leave it like that because it's just smooth wall, okay? So you're saying you're saying you, you take your wall and smooth first and then Yeah, right here. Here's smooth wall. Right. Oh, so, so you take it right there. So you still go back and do it the same way, you're saying. You do it the same way, but you didn't have to get it to smooth. Okay, okay. Okay, we took mud, we took mortar to smooth, not drywall. Okay. No scenes, no nothing. Okay? Uh, and then from there you'd go back with your hopper, okay. blow it on, and that's an orange peel, a knockdown orange peel where you go put, let it sit up a little bit and come down. So, any, any finish, all the same available finishes. Good question. Uh, insulation, decide what kind of insulation you want. Okay? Uh, you need cellulose, fiberglass, it, it's all the same. Your trusses, yes. Is that insulation attachment that's already offered? Insulation attachment is on. Cool. Okay. Uh, but we've discovered we can't blow insulation from 12 inches very easily without going down like this with a pipe, which we do. You can let it dry and just, just do it normal. Uh, when we tried to blow it with just the CNC head moving, it was just it was just getting caught because of the inside. Okay, mm -hmm. it was getting caught. So we have to blow while we're printing. 
which causes problems to, uh, we, we, we definitely have more work to do to get it to where it, and it really depends what kind of material you want. Fibromyalgia is a lot different from cellulose. Uh, but let, let's put it this way. Our, our computer knows where the head's at. And I can blow anything I want. I can backfill extra mud. I can put anything I want in the wall. So up a little bit. Okay, trusses. Traditional trusses. So you crank your wall, you let it dry, put the top plate on, lots of different ways to connect that. We've shown you that in some other video. Then you roll your trusses, just like normal. Use your hurricane straps, tie everything down. Um, what's the board called? The board eight redwood that you sell to buy at Home Depot. Big backer board? <laughs> not hard to find. It's not. Shiplock? Huh? Shiplock? It's the synthetic, uh, it's a plastic. Two by four, two by sixes. Anyway, we're, we're right we're right around the corner from being able to print two part epoxy trussing right on site. Any shape you want, rounded shapes you just can't even imagine you've never ever seen before. But we're just trying to keep it simple, stupid right now. So if we're just talking about these trusses, uh, have your truss package brought out, put your top plate on, roll your trusses, uh, sheet the roof. Okay, you're ready to go. So essentially, in real simple terms, we've addressed here what we do do and what we don't. And this is what we do do. So we're talking about cost savings and time savings. Uh, don't call me yell at me because you're like, well, that doesn't include toilets or carpet and windows. It's like, I don't know, can't please anybody. I'm saying, we'll call you back and we can print toilets. Then you can get really excited and say, you know, it's just the coolest tool in the whole world. But then you'll be excited. So, Trusses, um, can you print those on pre-existing buildings that are already there, like walls that are already there that need a new roof? Trusses will probably be printed out flat and then rolled up. Okay. Two part epoxy trusses. All right, so if, if the walls are already there, like on a building, uh -huh. can can, our, can this product, you know, provide that for it? We can't support. print trusses in the air. So the trusses are gonna be flat, printed this way, picked up with a crane stuck up on there. Yeah, I yeah, understand um, that, but as long as they can be lifted up and put on there. Okay. Wood? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so let's go down to the line. Now we start getting in our totals, okay? What was the material cost for footing forming? Labor cost? How long did we allocate in days for it? Back building, footing stripping, slab forming, slab four. Okay, he's here, coming soon. Sorry to this one. We'll get good enough. Uh, framing, rough electrical, rough plumbing, drywall, taping, stucco, insulation, trusses, uh, coming soon. You'll come up with some totals. Okay? So, got to have a blueprint. Got to do your tape off. you come up with all your totals here. Because this, these are the things that concrete printing does do right now. Okay. And you have to understand that first, or you're not going to understand when we say 70% less and it takes two days to do all of this stuff versus what you're used to a month, month and a half, okay, starts to become a little bit more impressive. So from there, let's uh, get out of this one and go to our next one. Okay, pause there for a sec. Okay, we're going to go down to the back cost. So you know, we'll, we'll show you how, it, it's unbelievable to me, but it took us a little bit of time to try and figure some of this stuff out too, but uh, most materials coming in bags, uh, unless you're ordering it pre-mixed at a batch plant. Uh, and so, let's go on this. And most of what, most of everything we just talking about, most of that's gonna to apply to us from a sales standpoint. Yes. But, but at the same time, you guys need to focus on the linear budget so that you know how much material it's going to yeah. be for the project. Okay, let's just scroll a little bit more. Okay. Real simple, guys. Do you know how much is going to cost? So we're, we're, you're, our, our mix is made up of a, a bunch of different ingredients, okay? Uh, that we've experimented with to come up with nozzle speed times and what we can and can't do. At what point does it fall over? At what point doesn't it? 
Uh, but if you to just oversimplify this, if you just took a type N or a type S mortar mix, okay, and put in your, your pounds here, you got to break it into cost per cubic inch. Okay, that's how our calculators work. And to get it into cubic inch is width, length, and height. You add those three in, those three in divide, the, divide it out, and you'll come up with an approximate cost per cubic inch, about a half a set of cubic inch. Okay? Uh, and then it'll give you some other numbers down here if you're interested in how many yards material is that or, or whatever else. So if we said, okay, we want to try and print something, not gonna be the reason everybody's printing small stuff, like this tall, is because anyone, uh, even, you know, six axis robotic arm, anybody can print this tall, now this tall, okay? That's the magic number. Uh, I've said before, you can print it this way, okay? And I will get it to stack to a certain point. And that's why most of the whole, anything you see taller than that, you can look at the color variations, You'll see it's real white here, and it starts to get darker and darker and darker. It's because they're printing in sections. Uh, the magic number is about 8, 12, 18 inches. If you don't have your crap figured out, and that's all you can print that day. And that's why most of the stuff you're seeing that's tall, that's how they did it. They printed this high, and the next day this high, and the next up day. Problem is, you can't blend that. You can't have a nice stucco finish on the outside that's consistent because you got cold joints each day. And your stucco or your uh, drywall on the inside will never look pretty and just smooth and perfect. Okay? Uh, so, being able to print eight foot, have a beautiful like this, top to bottom, bottom to top, is essential. But in order to figure out what this costs, I need to be able to break my material into cost per cubic inch, okay, to work with our calculators. So, uh, that's it on this one. Okay, let's go back. Okay, now we're going to go into our mixed formula. Uh, this will show you the different types of ingredients that are most commonly used in developing different types of concrete and mortar mixes. Go ahead. Okay, scroll down. Okay. You got Portland cement, you got washed sand, you have silica sand. Uh, in some parts of the world, you have unwashed sand, just, you know, uh, sand right off the beach. And when you're printing with geopolymer, the coolest thing about that is it neutralizes the pH in your mix. Traditionally, salt is not friendly with uh, concrete, especially if you're using any type of rebar. Okay, now you got to, now it's really a problem. Go ahead. Would you say neutralizes the pH? Uh, with uh, basalt mixes, different types of basalt mixes. Um, then you have lime, you have calcium, you have fly ash, which is probably in basalt, or not basalt, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I said basalt mixes, right? Mm -hmm. Wrong word. Uh, geopolymer. Okay, and geopolymer mixes. Okay, fly ash, pores. Fluoride, aluminum, graphite, clay, gypsum, sodium, silicate, uh, potassium silicate, uh, and on and on and on. Uh, so this is what we give you. This is what our customers get. What is the formula and the math that allows us to be able to print uh, without stuff falling over? It really sucks if you try and build your own printer or buy a printer and you're trying to impress a customer and you've got a contract and your crap is falling over. That is what you get with Mudbox is we've done the fall over stuff ourselves. Go ahead. Did you personally build this? Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen a tool this good for, for mixing. No, you won't. There, this doesn't exist anywhere. Yeah. In the world. I look for it for it. I'm lazy. <laughs> 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 I'm going to steal it. Okay. For fly, I really want to steal from me because for it's not someone. Fly ash, they'll pay you to take it if it's if it's outside their specs, like within specs they sell it, but then anyway. Yeah. And that, that becomes part of the challenge with this too is you have sand, okay? Well you have beach sand, you have washed sand, you have unwashed sand, you have high aggregate sand, you have small aggregate sand, you have mesh, uh, you know, milled, different mills. 
all that plays a part. So, uh, yeah, I made you a really impressive list here, but this list is, uh, you know, a tenth of, uh, and that's why I said we spent a hell of a lot more time with our chemical engineers playing with this kind of crap than we did printing. We love to do this and print something. It's, it's pretty cool. These guys sit in and nerd out on this kind of stuff, and they can get really, really pissy about the type of line we were using or whatever else. And so, anyway. Everything for us is figured in batches. When you're trying to figure costs and stuff, we work in batches. Okay, the ingredients of specific measures are measured as batches. A batch equals one cubic foot. We have to have a starting point to play and get on the same ground with everybody. So we're going to talk cubic inches and batches. What does one batch of material cost? What's in it? How do you mix it? Okay, go ahead. I was just going to say, did you, did you, have you ever used like certain recycl recyclable materials like uh, spent foundry sand, like things that pose an environmental, like the EPA gives incentives if you can find a, a productive use for it, mm -hmm. like spent foundry sand, fly ash that's outside of... We the, do testing one day a week for different additive companies that are really keen now on concrete printing. We're a little apprehensive in some ways. It's not our, we're not the ones that are out there saying, hey, let us help you develop a you know, concrete mix for concrete printers that you guys can sell on Depot. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't help me at all. Yeah. So, but we do have people that are like, hey James, here's our stuff, we're sending out some free stuff, test it, try it, see if you can work it into what you're sharing with your customers because we know you guys are the only ones selling printers and they're gonna want to know what was the specialty mix and what's in it and where do I get it? And so, uh, yeah, we're, we're working on lots of testing companies, even uh, polystyrene balls and concrete and uh, just we barely touch the surface of where this thing is going to go so when it comes to strength and weight and so forth so the first three ingredients is that what you just get in a normal dry bag that you buy somewhere yeah for the most part you're going to get maybe with a little bit of lime in it okay so then how many more of those other things yeah if, if i just want to go cheap go fast and go buy ready mix okay yeah okay. they have their own little formulas but Anyway, so what you have to do, uh, if you're experimenting around with your printer or wanting to uh, try different things, is um, figure out what your cost of Portland cement is by a batch, okay? So that's a one cubic foot. It'll break that down into cubic inch tops for you and move your cubic inch tops over here total of all your cubic inch costs so that you can use the next calculator. And that calculator is going to want you to know that number. What is your cubic inch cost for material to print this home? Okay. So uh, I guess scroll all the way down for me. Go on. Go on. Yeah. And you'll end up, and then it'll break it out and say, okay, if you're able to actually order this and just make it out bag, this is what your bag cost would be. Cubic inch cost, cubic foot, and your bag. That's cost and cubic foot are the same. Okay, next one. You, you put antifreeze, some people put antifreeze in there, yeah. in their mix? Yeah. You went, this is really a partial list. Right? Yeah, you're just, you're just saying that stuff with the better reserve. Crisco oil. Crisco oil. Try Crisco oil, I swear <laughs> by it. KY, KY does some amazing <laughs> things to your concrete mix. Okay, yes. Just, I don't want to get you off the rabbit hole and stuff, but seriously, anything from that list? Yeah, what's that? He asked me if it seriously was on the list. A uh, virgin oil. Make sure you use virgin oil, <laughs> not regular oil. Yeah, they commonly in the winter, everybody, Alaska, stuff like that. They're using uh, yeah. antifreeze in their mixes. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, we're going to go to project costs now. Okay, so again, uh, let's, let's just pick a house. Okay, uh, let's do it. Let's say it's 20 by 30. And we got a room here and a hallway with this here. Front door. Now let me come down. So, oh, they didn't have access into that room. And then this room. Joining rooms. Okay. So you got to measure every single wall, okay? This wall. This wall. Okay, this. Okay, and if I have a closet here, 
just can't start. I don't do anything. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> now, uh, because there's different ways of doing this, I can print and leave voids for doors, or I can just print straight through. If I print straight through, it's a stronger structure, less opportunity for somebody to knock the whole damn thing down, stuff like that. And this stuff type like butter, especially when it's green on the saws all the exactly. I mean, You can actually almost go in with a, a tra uh, mason trap, just go straight down. So you're chopping line, and it, it's great. And he's like, ah, it looks a little skinny. Can we, get, can we do a 48? Yeah, no, put me off. Want a 48? You sure? Sign here. Okay. There you go. Okay. Okay. We can take it smaller. How yeah. do you have to say it's not butter anymore? And it's that awesome. depends on the mix. That depends on the mix. So you have hours and yeah. Uh, well, most of the time, you can't even start playing with it. Uh, I, I can make mixes that are pure in pipettes, uh, standard pipettes, type in mortar mix. You're looking at 20 to 30 minutes before you start playing with it. Right. Okay. So we're going to feed you up the square so we get some giggles, okay, which is going to be this measurement times that measurement, uh, which means absolutely nothing to us because, like I said, this this could have been a room, this could have been a home without these walls. Okay, so we just can't do square foot. Square foot does not do any for us. We need to know how many linear foot of walls and how tall those walls are going to be. So we're going to do square foot uh, and in our linear foot. Okay, linear uh, inches for one pass. Okay. So, Kish has just got me right here. One pass. Right here, we're looking at about five eighths. I can print an eight. I can print one inch. Okay. Um, this is the, the, the smaller the passes. You got some tiny right there. Oh, the tiniest one we got right here. Okay, so, all right. The the smaller the passes, the more correct it is to finish product. The easier it is to finish it out trial now, longer it takes. I gotta go all the way around you. Know? On, on something like this, no big deal. On a house, hell, you know, I got 480 feet before I get back to here. Okay? If I was gonna try and do a statue, Mona Lisa, a bear, a cougar, I wanna go as close to form as possible. So I have the least amount of traveling and finish work. Okay? But you'll find half inch uh, to three quarters of an inch trout out very, very easy. Okay? You're just knocking these highs down to the lows as you're going over it. So uh, you have to answer that in. That's an important component for what? Speed. Yeah, how long do you got to take to print? Okay? You'll find printing in smaller passes is one solution to. Working with a mix that's curing too slow. Because I'm exposing more mixed surface to the element as I'm printing. When I encapsulate a whole bunch in a big one inch thick pass, okay, I got a lot of mud in there that hasn't touched the air. Okay? So this is one solution. Okay? But, uh, and then why? Okay, how tall are these walls going to be? So you got to answer that in. Let's go down a little bit. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Are we going to do a double wall? Okay. These are walls with internal mortar support. So instead of a hollow wall, it has this ribbon of mortar support in the middle. So it's a little closer to what you would expect from a cinder block. Those would be on bearing walls, structural walls, uh, uh, retainer walls, things of that nature. Uh, Ideally, you're better off to go with a stronger uh, mix, maybe with some better fiber. Uh, anything you can do to avoid this mortar support, because once you put this mortar support in there, you can't just drop electrical lines yeah. in the same way. So your electrical is going back up, uh, your plumbing is going back up. Uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to. Most people think they have to. Most building departments think they have to because that's all they know. Okay, but. You don't have to. And you can just as well print uh, a whole wall like this here, which is structural as hell. It isn't going to go anywhere. Okay. Um, you can kick it. Ow. Okay. <laughs> okay, hold. Wall with structural support. Oh, look at that. Right here. Okay, so 
Is it a double wall? Uh, that's not a double wall. That's a single. So if I'm printing pie boxes or maybe just doing the outline of a barbecue, stuff like that, uh, do that. This is a hollow wall. This is printing around a wall that's got three more. So this here would be like for retainer or something. It's got the rebar already pre-done. It's in a footing. And I'm printing literally right around it, okay? Just right next to it. So you got to enter that in total linear inches for one pass. Okay, so I just take this measurement, okay? Do all of those, enter that number there. Okay, if we're doing, uh, if, if this said it was a double wall, it's going to automatically double it for you right here. Okay, so now it's going to give you uh, total linear inches for all your passes. Okay, all these passes divided out, total cubic inches of material. Um, we were missing one. Go up here. This has been replaced by one we used to have. Uh, you want to know how wide every pass? Are we going to print with a one inch nozzle? Okay. We made a climax. Are we going to print with a two inch nozzle? Okay. And that would be that up with the engineer. What's that? That would be stuff with the engineer. Yeah, the engineers are the one that called that out. Now that determines how much material. I know how high each pass, I know how wide this is going to be, I know it's a double or a single. Now I can do all the rest of the glory math and tell you this is how many cubic inches, cubic feet, cubic yards of material we're going to need. 